Uh, hello guys, um, today we're going to view uh, the second part of uh, Robot Cinematics. First of all, we're going to uh, make some review about homogeneous matrix. Then we're going to uh, study benavid hertzberg representation. Uh, in order to know kinematics equations, and uh, finally, we're going to uh, know about inverse kinematics. Well, first of all, uh, remember that from previous lectures, we know that if we know the position of some point P in uh, some moving frame B, and we want to know this same position with respect to some reference frame A, then it is possible just as a sum of vectors. It is possible to uh, add uh, the, uh, the translation vector, which is represented here as R, to uh, origin O prime, which is the origin of frame B, with respect to frame A. And we add the position of point P with respect to frame B, but uh, uh, we are considering some rotations here of the frame B with respect to frame A. So if we add these couple of vectors, we know the position of point P with respect to reference frame A. Uh, in order to have some practical uh, notation, in order to do operations with this uh, with this uh, uh, equation, then uh, we put it in. Uh, in a matrix, and this is called, if you remember, homogeneous transformation matrix because we are considering translation and also rotation. And the form of this homogeneous transformation matrix is, as you can see here uh, in the, the left hand side, you're going to see the vector uh, uh, pointing point B with, with respect to frame A, and some scalar here, which is 1. Well, first of all, uh, remember that from previous lectures, we know that if we know the position of some point P in uh, some moving frame B, and we want to know this same position with respect to some reference frame A, then it is possible just as a sum of vectors. It is possible to uh, add uh, the, uh, the translation vector which is represented here as R to uh, origin O prime, which is the origin of frame B with respect to frame A. And we add the position of point P with respect to frame B. But uh, uh, we are considering some rotations here of the frame B with respect to frame A. So if we add these couple of vectors, we know the position of point P with respect to reference frame A. Uh, in order to have some practical uh, notation, in order to do operations with this uh, with this uh, uh, equation, then uh, we put it in uh, in a matrix, and this is called, if you remember, homogeneous transformation matrix because we are considering translation and also rotation. And the form of this homogeneous transformation matrix is, as you can see here uh, in the, the left hand side. You're going to see the vector uh, uh, pointing point B with, with respect to frame A, and some scalar here, which is 1. Again, from previous lectures, uh, we know that in order to accomplish some uh, uh, arbitrary transformation, then we use successive multiplications of, of matrices. And this is known as composite uh, matrix. So for this case, because we are considering the rotation and translation, we are calling this the composite homogeneous transformation matrix. And again, again from previous lectures, uh, we know that in order to accomplish some uh, uh, arbitrary transformation, then we use successive multiplications of, of matrices. And this is known as composite uh, matrix. So for this case, because we are considering the rotation and translation, we are calling this the composite.
Well, uh, for this part of the course, uh, we're going to uh, use uh, the, the book by Peter Court, which is Robotics, Vision, and Control, uh, Fundamental uh, uh, Algorithms in MATLAB from Springer. But also, we are going to use the Robotics Toolbox for MATLAB, uh, which is a well, uh, for this part of the course, uh, we're going to use an inverse schematic uh, for, uh, for robotic arms. This, uh, uh, this doc the documentation of this toolbox can be found in the webpage by Peter Cork, and also uh, the toolbox also can be downloaded from, from the same page. Well, uh, remember that uh, we have forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. Forward kinematics is the problem of a given joint variables. Let me name these joint variables Q1 until Qn, uh, forming a vector of joint variables. Given that uh, we want to obtain the position and orientation of the end vector. Well, uh, Remember that uh, we have forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. Forward kinematics is the problem of a given joint variables. Let me name these joint variables Q1 until Qn, uh, forming a vector of joint variables. Given that uh, we want to obtain the position and orientation of the end vector. In order to accomplish uh, different robotic tasks, we use robotic arms. And uh, well, a robotic arm uh, can be thought as a change of uh, chain of rigid bodies, which are connected by joints. In order to accomplish uh, different robotic tasks, we use robotic arms. And uh, well, a robotic arm uh, can be thought as a change of uh, chain of rigid bodies, which are connected by joints. So, a uh, commonly method in order to find forward kinematics is to use what we name the Benedict Kaplanberg convention, and this convention uh, relates the link uh, J minus one with the next link, link J, um, using only four basic transformations, depending on the construction characteristics of the robot. This is a very important feature because we can have any configuration or any mechanical differences in the, in the links. And uh, using only four basic transformations, it is possible to find these forward kinematics. So let's talk first about the basic transformations that we are going to use. They relate the i frame with the i minus 1. So a uh, commonly method in order to find forward kinematics is to use what we name the benedict Kaplanberg convention. And this convention uh, relates the link uh, j minus 1 with the next link, link j. Um, using only four basic transformations, depending on the construction characteristics of the robot. This is a very important feature because we can have any configuration or any mechanical differences in the, in the links. And uh, using only four basic transformations, it is possible to find these forward kinematics. So let's talk first about the basic transformations that we are going to use. They relate the i frame Then, um, in order to find the so-called denavid kaltenberg transformation matrix, we use only these four basic uh, transformations. If you can see, we have some transformations. Uh, the first one is a, a, a translation. Uh, second one is a rotation. Then we have a translation, and we have a rotation. But uh, take a look that uh, the first uh, two transformations are with respect to uh, the zi minus one uh, axis, 
which is precisely the reference coordinate frame. And uh, the last two transformations, translation and rotation, are along or with respect to the x, i axis, meaning that is, this is the, the coordinate or the frame the, uh, which has uh, been transformed. <clears throat> then if we multiply all these four transformations, we're going to have this, uh, this uh, Dena-Witt-Hartenberg transformation. Take a look that what we are doing here is obtaining precisely some transformation from one frame. Then, um, in order to find the so-called Dena-Witt-Hartenberg transformation matrix, we use only these four basic uh, transformations. If you can see, we have some transformations. Uh, the first one is the uh, uh, well, as you have seen here, uh, we need four parameters, and these four parameters are going to to be specific for the links uh, that we have. I mean, they are closely related with the structure, with the mechanical structure of the robot, particularly with their links. Then uh, we're going to have some joint angle, which is theta i. And this theta i is going to be the angle of rotation from x i minus 1 axis to the x i axis about the z i minus 1 axis. And it's going to be the joint variable if the joint is rotary. Please take into account that this has to be followed. In order to obtain theta and all the rest of the parameters, these instructions have to be followed uh, by heart. I mean, uh, you have to take into account who is the reference frame, who is the, uh, the transform uh, frame, and the axis. The Well, as you have seen here, uh, we need four parameters. And these four parameters are going to to be specific for the links uh, that we have. I mean, they are closely related with the structure, with the mechanical structure of the robot, particularly with their links. Then uh, we're going to have some joint angle, which is theta i. And this theta i is going to be the angle of rotation from x i minus 1 axis to the x i axis about the zi minus 1 axis. And it's going to be the joint variable if the joint is rotary. Please take into account that this has to be followed. In order to obtain theta and all the rest of the parameters, these instructions have to be followed uh, by heart. I mean, uh, you have to take into account who is the reference frame, who is the, uh, the trans. Well, uh, once we know how to obtain these parameters, then um, another very important uh, idea uh, uh, or another very important step in the process of finding uh, forward kinematics is to locate all the frames, to attach a frame to each one of the joints that we have in the robot. So again, we have some steps and uh, uh, this, this, included, this is included in the convention by Denavit and Hartenberg. And, uh, well, the first step is to number the joints from 1 to n, starting with the base and ending with the end of vector. Typically, the base frame is, uh, is numbered with, with number 1, number 0, I'm sorry. And the second step is to establish the base coordinate system. It is establishing the right-handed orthonormal coordinate system, A0, Y0, and Z0, at the supporting base, with uh, the zero axis lying along the axis of motion of joint one. Okay. Then um, step number three is to establish a joint axis. We have to align the I with the axis of motion, rotary or sliding, of joint I minus one. Uh, number four is to establish the origin of the i's coordinate frame. Uh, this is to locate the origin of the i's coordinate at the intersection of the zi minus uh, um, zi and the zi minus one, or at the intersection of common normal between zi and zi minus one axis.
Well, uh, once we know how to obtain these parameters, then um, another very important uh, idea uh, uh, or another very important step in the process of finding uh, forward kinematics is to locate all the frames, to attach a frame to each one of the joints that we have in the robot. So again, we have some steps, and uh, uh, this, this included. This is included in the convention by Denavit and Hartenberg. And uh, well, the first step is to number the joints from one to n, starting with the base and ending with the end effector. Typically, the base frame is uh, is numbered with with number one, number zero. I'm sorry. And the second step is to establish the base coordinate system. It is establishing the right-handed autonomous coordinate system X0, Y0, and Z0 at the supporting base with uh, the zero axis lying along the axis of motion of joint one. Okay. Then um, step number three is to establish a joint axis. We have to align the I with the axis of motion, rotary or sliding, of joint I minus one. Uh, number four is to establish the origin of the i-th coordinate frame. Uh, this is to locate the origin of the i-th coordinate at the intersection of the zi minus uh, um, zi and the zi minus one, or at the intersection of common normal between zi and the. So let's consider some simple example here. Imagine that I have uh, some uh, some robot which has uh, uh, some uh, joint number one, which is a revolute joint here, and uh, we can establish this VI axis in red upwards, which is going to be turning turning around, and we have another axis here. So let's consider some simple example here. Imagine that I have uh, some uh, some robot which has uh, uh, some uh, joint number one, which is a revolute joint here, and uh, we can establish this VI axis in red upwards, which is going to be turning turning around, and we have another axis here. Uh, Then we can establish all, all the frames here. So for the first base frame, we're going to have Z0. Uh, we're going to have X0 and Y0 in, in this in this uh, uh, position. Then uh, we're going to name this theta1, the angle uh, uh, attached to the uh, joint number 1. We're going to have theta2. Then we can establish all, all the frames here. So for the first base frame, we're going to have Z0. Uh, we're going to have X0 and Y0 in, in this, in this uh, uh, position. Then uh, we're going to name this theta1, the angle. Uh, So, for example, here, uh, let us obtain all parameters. Um, a, a very interesting parameter here is alpha 1, because if you can see, alpha 1, which is the, the, uh, the joint twist, or the twist angle, for this case, it's going to be 90 degrees, because it rotates by 90 degrees around x0 to align Z0 and Z1. So it's the angle form. So, for example, here. Uh, let us obtain all parameters. Um, a, a, a very interesting parameter here is alpha 1, because if you can see, alpha 1, which is the, the, uh, the joint twist, or the twist angle, for this case, it's going to be 90 degrees because it rotates by 90 degrees around X.
Well, once we have found already all parameters, then what we're going to do is to substitute each one of the parameters uh, according to, for, the, for example, the first link uh, is going to be the first row. So let's take the parameters of the first row and find the transformation matrix from 0 to 1. Then uh, with the second row, we're going to find the matrix of uh, transformation matrix from uh, 1 to 2. And finally, uh, with the third row, we're going to find the transformation matrix from 2 to 3. Then after um, substituting all the parameters, we have the three then a bit handed the matrices corresponding to the first, second, and third link as shown here in the figure. <clears throat> of course, it happens the same uh, or in a similar way with transformation matrix from frame 1 to frame 2. We're going to have that the first column is the x2 axis with respect to frame 1, second column is y. Of course, it happens the same uh, or in a similar way with transformation matrix from frame 1 to frame 2. We're going to have that the first column is the x2 axis. Of course, for the third transformation matrix, I mean transformation from two from. Of course, for the third transformation matrix, I mean transformation. As we said before, the forward kinematic uh, matrix is going to be given by the successive multiplication of the navit kaltenberg transformation matrices. So if you remember, we call this a composite homogeneous transformation matrix. Then we have a transformation from 0 to 3 is going to be the multiplication of the transformation from, one, from 0 to 1, then from 1 to 2, and finally from 2 to 3. If we multiply the three equations, the three matrices here, we're going to have this big matrix transformation from as we said before, the forward kinematic uh, matrix is going to be given by the successive multiplication of the navit kaltenberg transformation matrices. So if you remember, we call this a composite homogeneous transformation matrix. Then we have a transformation from 0 to 3 is going to be the multiplication of the transformation from one from 0 to 1 then from 1 to 2 and finally from 2 to 3 if we multiply the three equations the three matrices here we're going to have this big matrix now according to these ideas if you can see the the big denavit heart and the uh, matrix that we have already found, which stands for the kinematics, for the photo kinematics of the equation, can be expressed as some function here. Um, let me name this uh, chi E uh, as the as the as the pose uh, or the the position and orientation of the end effector, and this is going to be equal to some function uh, calligraphic k. Now, according to these ideas, if you can see the the big Denavit heart and the uh, matrix that we have already found, which stands for the kinematics for the photo kinematics of the equation, can be expressed as some function here. Um, let me name this. Uh, chi e uh, as the as the as the pose uh, or the the position and orientation of the end effector, and this is going to be equal to some function.
Well, uh, now let's do some example using the robotics toolbox by Co Peter Cork and Madler. So consider this uh, two degrees of freedom planet robot in this figure. And uh, well, uh, then a bit hard the parameters are going to be uh, for link one, we're going to have a revolute joint. Let me name this Q1. Uh, DI is zero. I, I1 is one, alpha one is zero. Well, uh, now let's do some example using the robotics toolbox by Co Peter Cork and Madler. So consider this uh, two degrees of freedom planet robot in this figure. And um, well, uh, then a bit hard to but parameters are going to be uh, for link one, we're going to have a revolute joint. Let me name this Q1. Uh, DI is zero. I Well, okay, in order to define a serial robot in MATLAB, you want to first define each one of the links that you have. So in order to define the link object, we use the instruction link. And uh, for this link, I'm going to name this link number one, L1. And link has several parameters here, D, A, and alpha. And um, in your workspace, you can type L1.A. And you're going to have uh, the, the value of A of this link. If you type L1.D, you're going to have the value of D for this link. And you can ask also, the, well, OK, in order to define a serial robot in MATLAB, you want to first define each one of the links that you have. So in order to define the link object, we use the instruction link. And uh, for this, link, I'm going to name this link number one, L1, and link has several parameters here, D, A, and alpha, and um, in your workspace, you can type L1.A, and you're going to have uh, the, the value of A of this link. If you type L1.D, you're going to have Now, let us define the second link. Let me do uh, L2 equals link of D0, A1, and alpha 0. And now, what we need is to join this, uh, these links into a serial link robot manipulator. So let me name this, uh, or let me uh, store this uh, with, inside with variable, which is bot, and add instruction built in. Now, let us define the second link. Let me do uh, L2 equals link of D0, A1, and alpha 0. And now, what we need is to join this, uh, these links into a serial link robot manipulator. So let me name this, or let me uh, store this uh, with, inside with variable, which is bot. Now that we have already built the, the robot, then let us make some examples. So imagine that uh, there are a couple of joint angles given by Q1 equals to e plus 2.1 and Q2 equals 2.2. Then the pose of the robot and the factor can be found using uh, the instruction for power kinematics. And this is done by <coughs> the built-in instruction bot.fkind. And uh, between parentheses, you put this vector. Which now that we have already built the, the robot, then let us make some examples. So imagine that uh, there are a couple of joint angles given by Q1 equals to E plus 2.1 and Q2 equals 2.2. Then the pose of the robot and the factor can be found using uh, the instruction for power kinematics. And this is done by <coughs> the built-in construction bot.fkind.
we might try a, a couple of more examples. Uh, imagine that we have q1 equals to pi over 4 and minus pi over 4. So we're going to have another. We might try a, a couple of more examples. Uh, imagine that we have q1 equals to pi over 4 and minus. Well, now um, let us go with the David Kastenberg convention. Uh, this is a, a general framework in order to number and uh, to establish uh, the, the frames, to assign the frames uh, to each one of the joints for a robot. So um, first we have to number the joints, <clears throat> then to establish the base coordinate system. Uh, for this you have to establish a right-handed orthonormal coordinate system at the supporting base with zero axis lying along the axis of motion of joint one. Always, all the z-axis are going to be um, aligned uh, with the axis of motion, whether uh, it is a rotary or a sliding, uh, I mean a, a revolute or prismatic joint. Then we have to establish the origin of the ice coordinate uh, system. And for this, you have to locate the origin of the ice coordinate at the intersection of the zi and the i minus one axis this is one way of course if there's an intersection and if there is not an intersection then you have to locate the origin at the intersection of common normal between the i and the i minus one axis and the zi axis uh, for this well now um let us go with the david kastenberg convention and uh, this is a, a general framework in order to number and uh, to establish uh, the, the frames, to assign the frames uh, to each one of the joints for a robot. So um, first we have to number the joints, <clears throat> then to establish the base coordinate system. Uh, for this you have to establish a right-handed orthonormal coordinate system at the supporting base with zero axis lying along the axis of motion of joint one. Always, all the z-axis are going to be um, aligned uh, with the axis of motion, whether uh, it is a rotary or a sliding, uh, I mean a, a revolute or prismatic joint. Then we have to establish the origin of the ice coordinate uh, system, and for this you have to locate the origin of the ice coordinate at the intersection of the zi and the i minus one axis. This is one way, of course, if there is an intersection. And if there is not an intersection, then you have to locate the origin at the intersection of common normal between zi and the i minus one axis. And Then, following uh, previous instructions, you can um, assign all the frames to the joints here, to each one of the joints that we have. So as you can see, we have a frame number zero. Uh, we're going to have frame number one attached to the shoulder, then frame number two attached to the elbow, frame number three attached also to the elbow, but uh, uh, at the at the other link, uh, frame number four attached to um, some particular uh, part of the end effector, which is not exactly the end effector. Okay. Uh, then we attach uh, frame number five for the um, for the grid rotation, frame number six is the flange. And you can set, according to the instructions previously defined, you can set all uh, x, y, and z axes. You can see the only thing that we are doing is following the instructions. So first of all, we establish all the joint axes, and uh, precisely we have here uh, a final Z6 axis uh, corresponding to the end effector, and then um, we put the origins here. Uh, we have to locate the origins with the intersection of the i and the i minus one. <clears throat> or uh, they, if they are not intersecting, then 
we have to uh, take the intersection of the common normal with axis vi. So let's put origin O1 here, and now origin O2 is going to be in this position, origin O3 at this intersection, then origin O4, now origin O5 in the same position, origin O6 there. And the next thing to do is going to be to establish all the x-axis. So we are going to establish x-axis according to the uh, uh, the cross product that we have seen, but actually, if you remember, main idea here is that uh, it is possible to uh, set x i axis um, in the in the in, in some way or in the opposite way because of the plus minus sign of the cross product. So for this case, we we are taking this x one axis um, outward. Uh, from from the robot because the main idea here is to uh, align the mass quantity of axis in the same direction. Okay, so for example, we have many axes that are going outside uh, outside the, the the drawing. So we align x one axis. So of course, uh, taking into account the the right hand rule, we're gonna have that y one is going to be downward. Um, same idea is going to happen for x2 and y2, then x3, uh, we have the intersection there, and we choose the downward position because, again, uh, we have uh, another axis going downward. So this is x3, so according to the left hand, uh, left, uh, left hand rule, then we have y3 in this direction, then which is x4 going downwards with that intersection, and uh, y4 in this direction, it is, mm, there's no way to put it in another direction because of the left, left uh, right hand rule, and uh, then let's go with x5, we have an intersection there, so there's no problem, and y1 is going to be in this in this direction and let's go for x6 and take a look x6 is going to be uh, of course uh, going from the origin o6 and um, we can set x6 x6 uh, whatever we want so uh, we are aligning this to several axes that are going again outwards uh, from from the from the drawing and uh, we have y6 there and we're done. Then, following uh, previous instructions, finally, forward kinematics is going to be found multiplying successively each one of the dynamic part of the matrices uh, that we have. But uh, before doing that, what we have to do is to obtain all parameters, all tenabit Hartenberg parameters for each one of the joints and links that we have. Um, so um, from the picture, it uh, can be easily found if you, if you look carefully. All parameters, um, alpha, A, and D, and we know that all the, the joint variables are going to be the variable the joint. So please remember that uh, theta i, it has the, the definition, also we have a definition for alpha i, this is an a i, and finally uh, for d. Um, so we have already found, uh, already assigned the, the, the frames to each one of the joints here, and also we have found already... Finally, for the, kinematics, uh, is going to be found multiplying so successively, each one of the dynamic pattern of matrices, matrices uh, and that we get them in order to obtain the uh, forward kinematics of, of the robot. Then, if you want to practice here, um, you might do this for homework. Then, if you want to practice here, um,
Let us make another example. Uh, now we're going to take. An Let us make another example. Uh, All needed uh, measurements are plotted in this slide. All needed uh, measurements are then um, the table that we're going to use is easily found to be this one. Also, again, this can be obtained from. Uh, some books on uh, robotics and also of course in some papers. Then um, the table that we're going to use is easily found to be this one. Also again, this can be obtained from uh, some books on uh, robotics. Then for Puma 560, we're going to have the six matrices defined as you can see here. So we have a transformation matrix from 0 to. Then for Puma 560, we're going to have the six matrices defined as you can see here. So we. Of course. This can be uh, programmed with a computer and just uh, substitute the values of theta, which, is, uh, which are our joint variables. Of course, this can be uh, programmed with a computer and just uh, substitute the values of theta, which, is, uh, which are our joint variables. And finally, so let's use uh, MATLAB and the toolbox from Peter Cork here. Um, this toolbox has already the model of Puma 560 built in. So uh, you call the model using the instruction MDL underscore Puma uh, 560, and then uh, call P560, and you're gonna have the table. So you're gonna have this table, which is uh, six degrees of, of uh, so let's use uh, MATLAB and the toolbox from Peter Cork here. Um, this toolbox has already the model of Puma 560 built in. So uh, you call the model using the instruction MDL underscore Puma uh, 560, and then uh, call P560, and you're going to have the table. So you're going to have this table, which is uh, six degrees of For every robot, we have uh, different configurations, of course. So there are typical configurations, which are also known as canonical configurations. So for the 560 robot, uh, we might have the zero angle configuration, uh, which is uh, already built in, in in the toolbox. It's QV. And we have the values of each one of the angles here, which are uh, all angles are zero. That's why it is called zero angle. Uh, also, we have, for example, the for every robot, we have uh, different configurations, of course. So there are typical configurations, which are also known as canonical configurations. So for the 560 robot, uh, we might have the zero angle configuration, uh, which is uh, already built in, in in the toolbox. It's QV. And we have the values of each one of the angles here, which are uh, all angles are zero. That's why it is called zero angle. Uh, also, we have, for example, then we can make an example here. We have already built in the Puma 560. So if we went to to MATLAB to show us. Then we can make an example here. We have already built in the Puma 560. So if we went to to again, we can use the instruction for forward kinematics, 
and just uh, type C560 dot forward kinematics of QZ and as you can see you're going to have some uh, uh, confirmation again we can use the instruction for forward kinematics and just uh, type C560 dot forward kinematics of QZ and as you can see A good practice for you is to study uh, section 7.2.2 from the uh, course book, I mean, the, the book from Peter Fork. Um, you can use MATLAB and a good practice for you is to study uh, section 7.2.2 from the uh, course book, I mean, the, the book from Peter Fork. Um, you can use MATLAB and the toolbox to do So remember that <clears throat> we have uh, forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. Forward kinematics is the problem of uh, given the joint variable to find the position and orientation of the end detector. But inverse kinematics has been the opposite. So remember that <clears throat> we have uh, forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. Forward kinematics is the problem of uh, given the joint variable to find the position and orientation of the end detector. But inverse kinematics has been the first of all, it's more difficult than forward kinematics, and this is because uh, there is no systematic loss form. Uh, solution. Um, this is one problem. Another problem is that the solution is not unique because, uh, for example, we might have redundant robots. Or a uh, typical problem is that uh, for achieving the some some position, as in the figure, we have x y position of the end. First of all, it's more difficult than for mathematics. And this is because uh, there is no systematic loss form uh, solution. Um, this is one problem. Another problem is that the solution is not unique because, uh, for example, we might have redundant robots. Or a uh, typical problem is that uh, for achieving the some, some position, as in the figure, we Uh, for the general case, remember, um, given the third pose, I mean position and orientation of the end effector, let me uh, describe this using chi e uh, variable. The problem is what are the required joint coordinates? So this can be described with, a, with an equation. We are trying to find q, which is this vector, and this is going to be equal. Uh, for the general case, remember, um, given the third pose, I mean position and orientation of the end effector, let me uh, describe this using chi e uh, variable. The problem is, what are the required joint coordinates? So this can be described with, a, with an equation. We are trying to find q, which is this vector, and this is going to be Take, for example, um, some end effect pose for Puma 560. Take a canonical configuration QN, which has uh, for all the joint variables, we're going to have 0, pi over 4, minus pi, 0, pi over 4, and 0. So if we, plot, if we type QN, you're going to have the. Um, uh, take, for example, um, some end effect pose for Puma 560. Take a uh, canonical configuration QN, which has uh, for all the joint variables, we're going to have 0, pi over 4, minus pi, 0, pi over 4, and 0. So if we plot, if we type QN, you're going to have the. Um, uh,
Robotics Toolbox from Peter Cork has um, several ways to find inverse kinematics. So because of Puma 560, a fixed axis uh, robot arm with an spherical wrist, then we can use this method, which is again built in the toolbox, which is called uh, inverse kinematics 6S. Um, in order to compute inverse kinematics using a cross-form solution. So um, let us try. Take uh, take a look. We have already found some forward kinematics T, right? So if we use inverse kinematics, uh, we should have Qn, right? But robotics toolbox from Peter Cork has um, several ways to find inverse kinematics. So because of Puma 560, a fixed axis uh, robot arm with a spherical wrist then we can use this method which is again built in the toolbox which is called uh, inverse kinematic 6S um, in order to compute inverse kinematic using a cross-form solution so um, let us try take, uh, take a look, we have already found some forward kinematic T right? so if we use inverse kinematic uh, we should have QN right? But, well, let us, let us first check if QI give us the same kinematics. And if you can see, uh, we apply forward kinematics to this configuration QI, and it is exactly, let us, let us first check if QI give us the same kinematics. And if you can see, uh, we apply forward kinematics to this configuration QI. And it then um, take a look. We can force to be the uh, the same configuration we can force given uh, some uh, uh, forward kinematics here represented by capital T we can uh, obtain the same QI equals to inverse kinematics um, but here we are using then um, take a look we can force to be the uh, to the same configuration, we can force given uh, some uh, uh, forward kinematics here represented by capital T, we can uh, obtain the same QI equals to inverse kinematics. Um, well, uh, that's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for seeing. Well, uh, that's all for today, guys.